this is definitely a, a local village shop. There's not a lot of other shops around here with prices that are as good as it's. It's very handy and it's very handy for me. Scotmead is no ordinary shop. It's a cooperative. So what's the difference? Hi there, how are you? Hiya. Um, I was just wondering if you've ever considered becoming a member of Scotmead's. For a start, any customer or employee can become a member. Cost a membership? Just a pound. I've always fancied joining. I'd be more than just an ordinary customer and probably be more involved in the business. Being a cooperative means working with and supporting our members and communities. These youngsters get a free breakfast before school, thanks to ScotMed. If it wasn't for ScotMed, we wouldn't have a breakfast club that we have at the moment. It's uh, just a, a fantastic success story. Eighteen fifty-nine, Queen Victoria was just forty. Darwin published The Origin of Species. Dickens wrote, It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And 12 railwaymen, blacksmiths and joiners got together in Edinburgh to form the St Cuthbert's Cooperative Association. One of the founding committee said, We found new relish in our butter, ham and meal from our own shop. We were all yet working men. But we began to have the feeling that we were something more and would soon be businessmen, reaping profits we had for long been sowing for others. The first shop opened in Ponton Street in November 1859 with a capital of £30. No, do you all have an agenda? Number two is the Constitutional Review. You should have all had a document saying... 150 years later, Scott Mid is still owned and controlled by its members. They elected Hollis Smallman as president of the board. The board visits shots from time to time. Hollis is catching up with staff at Leven Street in Edinburgh, which has recently been refitted and Hollis is keen to see how it looks. Wonderful place. I like this place to work. Hollis started work at St Cuthbert's 51 years ago. His wage was just £3.40 a week. I worked all my adult life uh, in, in the cooperative movement. Uh, it means absolutely everything to me. Hi, how are you? Scotland still has an independent cooperative um, that belongs to the Scottish people. It's not owned by shareholders and fat payoffs and all the rest of it. It's owned by the ordinary working people. The early years of St Cuthbert's weren't easy. It was two years before the pioneers made their first surplus to distribute to the members. In 1864, the cooperative voted to allow women to join, providing they were married. They moved to purpose-built premises at Fountain Bridge in 1880. Over the next 40 years, they joined with other co-ops, opened bakeries, dairies and funeral homes. By 1912, St Cuthbert's had the largest sales of any co-op in the UK. your customers to be happy, make sure your staff are happy. Store workers are mainly recruited locally. Yeah, I stay in the village. That's the best part, you know, most people that come in. I live local, I live in the same street. 
Okay, my girl, just get you done. Customers are neighbours, hours are flexible, and promotion is a reality for many at Scotmed. They've worked 10 years, you know, and I've started at the bottom and worked my way, you know, up to here. And, it's, you know, it has been hard work for good times and bad times, more good times than bad. I started off in the night fill back in, uh, it was like, I think it was a wee 8 to 11 shift. Five days a week, five nights a week. I started part-time when I was 17 years old, when I was at school. I worked from Scott Mid uh, straight from leaving school in 1995. Progression level within the society is very good. And then I went on the management trainee scheme, and then I've just worked my way up from there. It's been very exciting for me. Don't be diddling me. Never will. It's not just about retail. ScotMed also runs funeral homes, helping families in their time of bereavement. The difference is between a PLC and a cooperative. With a PLC, you're responsible to the shareholders. And quite a lot of the decisions and the way the business is run is with that in mind. And the difference with a cooperative would be you'd be looking at the local community. Uh, you'd be looking at the members that you have existing to serve them and to look after them. And it's particularly appropriate within the funeral profession, where it's all about service uh, and, and not providing a product, but looking after families. A cooperative means to me that everyone's very friendly, everything's very open. The cooperative is not just about making money, it's also about caring for the staff, caring for our customers, uh, just caring for everybody that we meet in their day-to-day -day lives. Scotmade is Scotland's largest independent cooperative. It's big business. After 150 years of trading, the turnover is nearly 400 million, and it has almost 100 million in assets. 2009. The Scotmid Cooperative Society has over 130 food stores, 140 semi-chem discount health and beauty stores, eight funeral homes and a property division. From just a single shop to a network spanning Scotland, Northern Ireland and Northern England. In 1944, St Cuthbert's Co-op gave one Edinburgh lad his first job. The name was Connery, Sean Connery. As a schoolboy growing up in Edinburgh, I delivered milk here, fed his college. His milk round, number 007, was a wonderful training ground. Connery's milk was neither shaken nor stirred. I left school at 13. He stayed six years with a cooperative before his acting career took off. Nineteen forty-nine, St Cuthbert's ninetieth birthday, something to celebrate. Over the next sixty years, the business continued to adapt and change opening the country's first self-service store in 1949 and in 1981 merger with another co-op and the name changed to Scotmid. Since then, membership has climbed to nearly a quarter of a million. John Brodie is a worker at Scotmid's new HQ, Hillwood House. Not just any worker, he's the chief executive. I tend to think of Scotland as more of a large family business than a PLC type business. I think the pioneers would be immensely proud that the values and principles they established and lived their lives by have continued and endured for 150 years that the society has been in operation. To 
Suera Jalakasi is visiting Scotland from Malawi. Hi there. Hi. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. Thank you. It's a hunting trip. What she's scouting for are fair trade products. Okay. Um, Scott Mid was one of the first to take on fair trade products. It's, um, it's grown considerably over the last few years. Oh, that's sugar. Oh, is this sugar from Malawi? I'm really very pleased to see that their sugar is in this shop because that means a lot for Malawian producers. There's a lot that has happened in the community uh -huh. and the communities are really benefiting because I know of the communities that did not have electricity at all. Now they have electricity because of the fair trade premium. Seven thirty AM, Blackburn, West Lothian. An early shopping trip for a group of teenage boys. They come to buy breakfast. Total to pay? Zero. But they do have to keep within budget. So how much did they really spend? It was fifty pounds and sixty-nine pence. Blackburn's Get Ready for Work scheme prepares local teenagers for work. Local youngsters are getting a new start in life. Scott Mid provides the breakfast. You like your toast, eh? Enjoy coming in to eat my work. It's great the gear is the food door, we wouldn't get any breakfast. Scott Mid's tenet has always been that working hand in hand with a community depends on a thriving and competitive business. Underpinning the cooperative is a successful property division. In recent years, after a tough time for the retail business, Scott Mid began a programme of facelifts for the stores. Refitting is not only for the sake of customers, the new stores are brighter and better workplaces for the staff too. Try to practice, I think, what the cooperative movement's founders preached a long time ago. And that's why I'm here today, because I very much approve of Scott Mid. It's part and parcel of the fabric of this area. A local store has a special place in the hearts of the local community. So on the day of reopening, people are curious to see the changes. It's much better, what an improvement. The aisles are much wider now, and it's very clean and fresh. Oh, it's really nice, it's looking much brighter. I've lived in the area for 20 years, and I've seen one or two changes in this particular establishment. I'm very impressed with this one. Scott Mid's 150th AGM. <laughs> Every year, the society raises money for different charities. OK, can I ask all members in favour of the resolution to raise their pink voting slips? There are no outside shareholders. Here, it's one member, one vote. Quite clearly, the resolution has been carried. I'm a new member, so I've not been to one of these AGMs before. Does Scott Mead have a policy on recycling plastic? For example, yeah, plastic yeah. bags, will you provide recycling facilities in store? We have moved in the past year to um, biodegradable bags, as the chairman said. Um, staff are encouraged to ask people do they want to either supply their own bag or 
take one of the biodegradable ones. Cooperation to me is about self-help. Everybody works together, being part of a family. Um, ethical, um, honest. Working together. And still here after 150 years, and we'll be here in another 150, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> we have been passed the baton from the original founders ultimately and it's our duty to pass the baton on in better shape than we received it. The future for Scotland is hopefully many more years of success as an independent, successful cooperative business.